sure. This yeah. is like, um, I didn't really know what to expect, to be quite honest. So Same. Yeah, like both of us like had no idea. pleasantly like surprised, and this has been really rad. Um, the people are like super, super nice. Super nice. I mean, it's ridiculously nice. Yeah. It's so wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I always feel like I'm kind of like at home at cons, just because, you know, I'm a loud weirdo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I get to be around other loud weirdos, and like no one's judging anybody, and it's all like, yay! It's a very <laughs> loving environment all the yeah, time at great. cons. But um, yeah, no, this has been um, very, very, I don't know, I didn't know what to expect. It's our first con this year, too. Yeah, so it's yeah. like sometimes uh, you don't know how the year's going to pan out. And it's and, well, or, especially if it's a con you've never, never done, or don't know anyone that's done, you're kind of um, like, oh, you yeah, don't know yeah. what to expect. And also with the show that we are on specifically, um, it's not, I guess, technically like huge in the anime world. So you, if you go to an anime specific con, you don't know what to expect. So this has been really rad. I feel like there's a yeah. really nice presence for the show that. It I'm really has. We were very pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Um, so you guys uh, hit the con circuit. You guys have seen, you've been to other cons. Um, how, how do you guys, uh, what is some of your favorite things about going to cons and, and, and being out there uh, on the con circuit? Uh, the loving environment, yeah. I think. And the like people, everyone it's seriously so what I was kind. just saying. Yeah. yeah, like that's probably what really comes down to it. <sighs> Like it's weird. Like you go to a you go to a con and you have a high when you leave, but then you also get the blues after because Just it was so wonderful. Yeah, it was a little <laughs> bit. And you're like, oh, but, uh, but, but then you have another one. Then and then like you a few hopefully weeks you have that. another one that you can go to. But um, yeah, it's a ride and um, I think just. Everyone is really excited to see mm -hmm. each other and talk about the things that they love and things that influence them. And a lot of people are artists, so you're just kind of like spreading that around. Yeah. Really well, cool. um, even on that point too, like a lot of us are very busy, and so like Sam and I are very good friends, but we don't get to see each other no. very frequently. So this is an this opportunity. This is really like great opportunity. Yeah, exactly. I was just telling her someone. I was like, oh, it's like Jen and Sam get to have a weekend. Exactly. Girls trip. Our Valentine's. <laughs> Yeah! Uh, Galentine. Galentine. Valentine's. Valentine's. I like Valentine's. I like Valentine's. It's really fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice to be able to hang out with your friends. And aside from the people that you work with, other people that you've met on the con circuit we being like, oh my gosh, it's so nice to see you again. Yeah. And, and it's just this really lovely little family where everyone's, oh, it's, what have you been working on? How have you been? Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen you since this one. And it's, it's really, really nice. And, and just like with, with people working it, too. too. Yeah, meeting right. People. And meeting the new people. Um, yeah, and all, like you get to, like, I don't know, meet really, really nice people. Like, art handlers are oh, always the best. And, always. Like, it's, the, it's a good time, so. It really is. I'd probably say my second favorite thing is merch. Oh, yeah. She buys a ton of merch. Um, I, I buy, do. I go a little crazy on the floor. I'm like, that's about it for me. Yeah. So. Um, uh, she's a little, a little cooler than me. I'm a little dorkier. Um, <laughs> no, definitely not it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, well, I just mean, like, I like all the, like, really and cheesy yeah. little well, stuff, but I wear it, like, I dress like a teenager and I'm 37. Like, you're, well, you also, like... Uh, you are into like the genre, yeah, and there yeah, seems yeah. to always be that. When there's we all, yeah, there's always stuff so. that I love because I mean, Steven Universe is my favorite thing ever. So I always can find things from that. And I'm a huge Studio Ghibli person. Oh, you know, yeah. I have a Kadoma tattoo. Like mm -hmm. I have like a bunch of pop culture tattoos actually. Yeah, so, so like this is so my scene. Um, I just happen to be an actor that got really lucky and, and gets to go to these things that I would go to anyway. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Very cool. Yeah. Um, for, for you guys, like, uh, what is your reaction to, like, meeting people who, like, gush about your work or, like, the fans? Oh like, my god, it means it, everything. Do you ever get used to it? Is it something that's just like, wow, this is still just so... It, no, it, I, I never get used to it, no. but it's, you get more, like, accustomed to it. Like, I will say, I'm... It's less weird now that I've been doing it for a few years, but the yeah. first time it was definitely like, was like the first time I remember someone like <laughs> seeing me at a con and just screaming their head off from across the room and going, ah! and like pointing at me, and I was like, what are you trying to do? <laughs> what? Um, and now, you know, I still think it's, but now I'm not like, what, what, what? I'm like, oh yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's like really surprising some of the things that um, the fans will talk about or um, ask you about yeah. as like an actor. Yeah. So that's really exciting too because really I'm not is. gonna lie, you feel kind of, uh, um, I was gonna ask kind of curse, but like you just kind of feel like sometimes um, like a butthead when you're an actor. Like, um, you know, I'll go to my son's elementary school and there's like people with real jobs who are like, what do you do? <laughs> like, yeah. um, 
So it's really nice to go to a place like this and people appreciate the thing that you're on or they appreciate your work specifically. Um, well, and it, it feels very yeah. fulfilling. Um, so it's, it's, I don't know, I, I love talking nerd shop about being an actor. So yeah. it's Same. a really nice place to do it. I completely agree with yeah. that. And then also, as actors, like Sam and I both have been in this industry for a very long time. And to be appreciated for what you've been doing, yeah, it means so much. Like we yeah. just, because it, it, it can get very hard. It can yeah. get very lonely because you're dealing with lots of, and, yeah, very disheartening. And, and you know, I, I haven't booked anything new <laughs> in a while. So it's really nice or not big. That's what I mean. I booked stuff, but like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, the level nice. of Ruby. And mm -hmm. so it's really nice to at least like when I'm feeling like, man, my career is not going well. It's like coming to these cons and yeah. remembering, you stop it. Yeah. Look at what you like, have. Look cool. at these beautiful smiling faces that think you're amazing. Like you're okay, girl. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's it okay. Does. Yeah, my husband reminds me that a lot. Yeah. And he like it's almost like I get super low, and then a con happens to come up, and he's like. This is a time for you to kind of fill up that cup again, yeah. um, and to remember, like you're you're in it for your like because you want to be an actor, mm -hmm. but and it yeah, means I'm not gonna, to I'm not gonna yeah. lie, like it also is a vanity thing. All actors are there is a there's a there's narcissism in in all of us. <laughs> like there's just various levels, I think. Yeah. Um, well, but it also depends. So like. I was never given the like, I don't know. I was always considered too much, so I was just like <laughs> trying to like find a way to control that and acting yeah. was a way I, yeah, I found that, that I could distill my personality mm -hmm. into a way where people could handle it. I know that sounds depressing. Now I'm older and I realize I don't have to do that anymore. But right. at first, like people are very rude and mean when you're growing up and you know you're a kid or oh a teenager. God, yeah. And so it was always an escape route. It, exactly. Um, which was And lovely. also it's uh, for me, I was always incredibly moved by performances oh my and God. I always learned so much from the actors that I watched and the movies that I watched and I had my opinions changed on things. I mean realized that I was thinking about things in the wrong way and yeah. I always loved the transformative power of acting and how you could actually just with acting change someone's entire perspective mm -hmm. about themselves or another group of people and I that was my favorite thing is that I think uh, acting and art and theater and film and what they do that's the most important is that they show us ourselves yeah. and they show other people. Yep. Um, jumping off of that, uh, uh, about acting, like, uh, what, for you, uh, personally, what, what was the thing that, like, what was your gateway to, like, leading into, uh, wanting to be uh, an actor? Ooh, like, what was the thing that, like, uh, huh, I want to do that, you know? Um, I was in elementary school and we had a, we got called out of class to go watch a little play, like a Christmas play, and I saw a bunch of my friends up on stage and I was like, why, why am I not doing that? Like, that looks awesome. Um, and so after that, I was a big sports kid. I did sports, I was super, super heavy into sports until about like 15, 16. And, um, but I asked my parents, can I start going to um, the theater uh, classes after school? And my parents were like, mm, sure, I guess. <laughs> um, and then I was like, this is a love. And I completely fell in love with it and it really opened me up and I started doing theater camps after that. And so, yeah, like I just, I got, I guess it was always within me. Um, and it just, I finally got to yep. open the little door. It was cracked, and so I just walked through. Yep. Um, yep. So that was, <laughs> was an elementary Christmas pageant, basically. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think a lot of us yeah, have that, like, that. Technically, <laughs> my first acting role was the Virgin Mary and the. Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, when I think about it, you know what? My original role was one of the three wise men. Yes. And I'm like, I, <laughs> but it was, I remember, it was a living. It was a living. It was, it was a living nativity that was traveling and it was outside. And so, like, people were, like, going around, like, yeah. to different houses. And I remember I was outside in a makeshift, like, barn <laughs> with hay and, like, a dog, like, the whole thing, just, oh like, God, sitting, like, so a, cute. like, a six-year-old Mary. I don't know what they were thinking. It's so weird. Oh, they, but, yeah, like, they all, like, made us. It's the strangest thing And ever. then they also had a baby Jesus that was also, like, a five-year-old. Yeah, like, right. No, like, exactly. What? Like, what is happening? <laughs> so, technically, that was my first life. But. Oh, Catholicism. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, after that. Uh, I was always that kid that was constantly, because I was an only child, so I was always making shows and puppet shows and playing in the dirt with my puppet and like doing different things with my dolls and 
dressing like a clown or like screaming at my parents yeah. to come into the room and watch this dance routine I did or whatever. So I was always, I was always that kid that was constantly just like, ah, I always forget, clown. like I, I used to make up plays before I knew what plays were, I guess you could same, say. Same. Um, and my parents, I don't think they understood what that outlet was. I didn't talk for a while because I had two older sisters that talked for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I always forget, like, yeah, I used to perform for them. It was a while they thought they needed to take me somewhere because I wasn't really speaking. And um, finally, they were just like, no, she was making up stories by herself in her room for a very long time. And my sisters just, yeah, they just talked for me. Um, I guess that they, I guess that didn't translate for them that, like, maybe we should put her in something else. Right. Um, so thankfully, I'm glad I was able to recognize it in that little pageant. Um, I was like in third, second. I can't remember. But man, I was jealous. <laughs> I was so jealous. I was like, why is Emily up there and not me? That's really <laughs> funny. No, we did theater That's all growing so up. Yeah, I, uh, middle school is when I first started taking like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like legitimate theater classes was yeah. in middle school. And um, I was also, I played the cello when I was like 10 all the way up to like oh 18. God, still, do no, oh I wish God. I did. You should, I bet you could pick it back up. I've tried. Oh no. <laughs> I've tried. I was very ashamed of myself. Oh no. It was embarrassing how little I retained. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I used to play the saxophone. Really? I, yeah, it was Aww. not bad. Oh, um, I, I was, was like fourth chair. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> the best. But I did win a couple of like, you know, silver medals and oh, like cool. soloists and like the contests. You know, I was I was not inherently good, but I like wanted to be big. so yeah, yeah. badly yeah. that I would just practice and practice, 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 practice. The saxophone is fairly easy to play. Yeah. Um, it really is. Um, and I still have it. And my husband's like, you should pick that back up. Because every time we see a band, I'm like, that could have been me. Could have been me if I just kept going. And I'm, <laughs> this is actually kind of sad. I wanted to keep playing the cello. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was in high school, I was told that you weren't allowed to have multiple electives. Yeah. Um, and my, You have to go one path. Right, you have to go one path. And so my orchestra teacher, my freshman year, what a violently awful woman. <laughs> She, instead of doing what teachers should do and be like, well, if you really like both, let's find a way to do both. To do both. No, she goes, you should really quit orchestra, kid. Oh my it's God. not for you. Oh, no. You should focus on acting. And I remember that just being like, oh, wow, well, that's so dis. Oh my God, okay. that breaks. And then, and then my senior year, are you ready for this? I was freaking angry. What happens? But the first violin chair gets an extra, all of a sudden, they're like, oh yeah, she can do theater and or, oh yeah, this person. All of a sudden, oh, when like the rich, pretty, like blonde girls were like, I wanna do both. They were like, okay. I was so mad. And I was like, just cause I wasn't the best, just cause I wasn't the best at the cello, that is so rude. Like, just, like I was, for, yes, or she I was 14, what did she expect me to be, Yo-Yo Ma? Yeah, I'm anyway, <laughs> so like, I, I mean, I mean, I know there are, brilliant 14 year old cellist. It's just like, what do you know? Like, come on. Um, You're supposed to foster create. You are supposed to. And, and she didn't. And it, it really, it really disheartened me. And also I came from a really poor family and the only way I could play the cello was by renting the school one. So then I no longer yeah. had access to a cello. And so then I just stopped. Oh, but then so when I was doing theater, it was like constant one act play state. Yeah. I mean, the, the theater program at my high school is re weirdly one of those yeah, that's considered really wonderful. very, very reputable, were in very a, well known. Were you in like a faculty kind of area? Like? No, but I was in a 5A yeah, school we were in a too. big city. Yeah. So like in San Antonio, it's considered we, one we of were, the best. So we, were right, we were outside of Austin, but like um, we're still like, it was in the sticks. Yeah. Um, but we were a huge school, but like the theater department was like actually like really, really rad. And the... Yeah. One of the girls that went to school like four years before me or something, I think her grandfather invented an igloo. And so like gave a bunch, she was into the theater department and the arts world. So they like built a theater, <laughs> just gave a ton of money. It was a weird theater. I'm not going to lie. It was like branched off of like the, <laughs> off of like the sports department. And <laughs> it was a very poorly like designed theater, strange. but it was really big. Yeah. And, um, but they gave them a, like a really great space and had their, they had literally like their own place it used to be a tiny facility like this tiny room and all this but mm -hmm. all of a sudden they were they were given money and fun like these really great a great opportunity and so I'm really glad that that happened for me yeah, for me high too. school and then when I went to college the same thing happened I went to a school way out in Georgia 
And it was a small school. I didn't go to SCAD. Don't ask me if I went to SCAD. Everyone thinks I did. But, like, you, um, this department didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it got flooded with funds. And they built this multi-million dollar facility, truly professional. Wow. So, like, these as the students really got to start working, like, in a professional setting immediately. And, um, and everything was super hands-on. Like, Absolutely. you got to be on stage immediately because of the, your work rather than your, your grade. Um, oh, yeah. So it was really rad, and I just like I always wondered why oh, I went my out God. there. I remember my first heartbreak. Oh no! From the great I, thing, yeah. Oh no! I was puck oh, in midsummer, God, and yeah. I was amazing. You would be. I was amazing. As fuck, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I failed a class right before opening. No, and you they, couldn't do it. I couldn't it. do it. It was my first huge actor art, like. Oh my god! Heartbreaking, been, like heartbreaking that I couldn't perform it, and I had to watch Ashley every night steal every <laughs> like single it. one of my moves and she'd not do them as well. And it just and everyone was praising her, and I was like, "Oh, that's so sad." <laughs> and I'll tell you, like Puck is one of those roles that every woman wants to play. Yeah, but we don't get to very we often. Don't get to very often. Um, yeah. I I did a Shakespeare competition, monologue competition, mm -hmm. um, where I did the 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 Puck speech at the yeah. end, oh, yeah. and. I won first oh, place. Nice. Come on, well, I guess with that. Well, I'm sorry. We really went on. We were sorry. <laughs> um, you just asked. We us like acting. Started. Um, that's so sad. That was oh, ten minutes. That's fine. That's fine. Easily that's ten minutes. <laughs> you guys have amazing energy. Uh, so it's really good. Um, I mean, uh, you guys have been kind of uh, dancing around uh, this next question, but it's basically uh, for people who come to cons and, and stuff like that. They all enjoy different. Things like anime, video mm -hmm. games, movies, things like that. Um, for you guys, like personally, like what are the things that like are your personal like? This is what I gush about. This is my thing. This is oh. my, you know, like you've been dancing. I'll go movies, first. Uh, yeah. So. Horror is my life. Uh, I love horror movies. I have a podcast all about them uh, called Women in Caskets, and we break down horror movies from a feminist perspective. We do trope episodes. We talk about everything and pertaining to them. Um, I'm currently working on uh, my own stuff right now, so I've been focusing more on writing my series and my movie, and I've got a lot of irons in the fire, and hopefully in the next few years you'll be able to see some of the stuff I've been working on if, you know, meetings go well. But, um, aside from that, like, I mean, I was a Freddy girl from, like, minute one when I was growing up, so, like, my dad showed me Nightmare on Elm Street when I was, like, five, which is totally unadvisable, but for some reason it worked on me. Yeah. I loved it. And it's just my whole life, it's just, I love horror, and I love what it means, and it's, I, I love it. It means everything to me. I, it's, it's such a, versus the last thing I'll say, it is, in my opinion, the most versatile genre. Oh, yeah. Because you can literally do every single genre within the horror genre, genre but it still be horror. Yep. So you can do romance, you can do comedy, you can do drama, you can do horror, you can do slut, yeah. you can make a silly movie, you can make a serious, I mean, literally... Anything you want to make, you can do it in horror. I, th I think that's why it's uh, very frustrating to see, like, when we do mainstream award season, <sighs> where you start, where you are like, where? Where's the genre? The genre film, but it's changing like, though. It is slow because because Guillermo, like, I mean, a, a, Guillermo del Toro, a like, monster movie, like, a technical horror movie. Yeah. Won the Oscar. That's wild to think that's also horror because like well, it's creature me, feature. For me, it was like oh, I don't see it as horror. But it because, is. It is like, creature feature. It is a creature feature. It is yeah. creature feature that does count as like, horror. I will die on that grave. And I think a that, horror like, movie won the Oscar. <laughs> well, like, and then when we think about like the acting rewards in general, yeah. though, like oh, they that never. Is, oh my gosh, that's so so many brilliant, brilliant performances have been, just been I mean, Tommy Collette and Hereditary, are you kidding me? Uh, 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 and Jennifer Kent's Babadook, the lead in that, and, and Ellie, one of the most incredible performances by a woman I've ever seen in my entire life yeah. is by her in that film. And it's just amazing. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's just a uh, disservice. Because Total I feel disservice. like um, it would open the door for a lot of people. A to lot kind of, of people want to watch, like they would not know that they could be interested in a film like that. Well, that's why we started the podcast, is yeah. because there's a lot of people that didn't realize. I always tell people like, oh, you think you don't like horror, but trust you me, do. there's yeah. at least one Something horror you movie do. you like. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you, there's at least one. <laughs> and it's true. I'm like yeah. we've talked about it, yeah. and also I've opened the doors a little bit more on like what I will start to watch a little bit more. Like I. 
I didn't want to watch Midsummer, and then I finally did. And I was like, why the heck did I not watch this for so long? Oh, um, God, I Now love, I'm so uh, angry that I didn't watch it on the big screen. I loved that movie. Um, I, uh, oh, I love that movie. It, for me, I don't know. I'm a person, I don't have any real true obsessions. I don't. And um, I feel like I'm one of those people that kind of just like... I kind of like everything, and I like it to a certain level. Um, if anything, uh, what I could probably be truly obsessed about is, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> I, uh, I'm pretty obsessed with, like, empowering other people. I really like that. Like, so, like, right now we're in, like, a renaissance of, uh, of indie filmmaking that um, truly is unparalleled That's and um, because anyone can make a truly incredible film in their pocket. Um, so I would, I would like to say I feel like I'm a champion for things like that. Um, I, I'll watch anything that's Anything that's kind of weird to you do incredibly you, strange. You uh, like weird stuff. I like weird you do. stuff. You do. Uh, you like weird stuff more than I think people would realize you like. Yeah, weird I stuff. don't really. I don't. I feel like I'm educated enough to talk about it, but um, I, you know, at the same time, I don't. Would never call myself a film critic because I don't think. Uh, but you are smart though, and you do yeah. understand. Like you, yeah, you I think fully so. understand. So. Yeah, and uh, but I'm definitely like I'm a champion like for people who want to also. Uh, like uh, the Duplass brothers, I really, really oh, appreciate I love the them brothers. because I love like them. they are, um, they're what you imagine, uh, what you want to, you want to create a group that is self-sufficient and a ragtag team that supports and empowers one another. Yeah. And, um, and also they've done that now that they have tons and tons of money. <laughs> like, um, and they do that all of the time they do and um, so I love things like that but that's Agreed. kind of it and I'm obsessed with my kids they're pretty rad she, um, she's got the best oh. kids I, do. I have the best kids and it's cool to see my son interested in things that I, I wasn't interested in like Pokemon um, he's really into that stuff and he's really into uh, Ben 10 and all this other stuff that um, that's kind of exciting for me because now I'm a kind of a part of the world yeah so um, it's cool to kind of riff on that he's only six so that's really, really special to me. Yeah. Um, so, uh, jump to the next question. Uh, you are both uh, very big people who, uh, very big people, people who, who love to support other people who are doing creative endeavors and things yeah, like yeah. that. For someone out there who's trying to do some sort of creative endeavor, whether it's, you know, whether it is like acting or mm -hmm. art or something like that, what's like, what is a piece of advice you would give someone who's going down the road of Don't creative? be scared. Yeah. That's the Don't number, number, number one is try to, and if you are scared, fight that fear. Yeah. Cause you do it anyway. Really, do it anyway. And even if it's terrible, it doesn't matter because you did it. And then yeah. you know what, next time? It won't be as terrible. It won't be as terrible. I mean, it's all. <laughs> it's like you just have to. It's that fear of just like, all right, you have. You can't be afraid of failure. Actually, failure is amazing because failure is where learn. you learn what you shouldn't do and what you should. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, I did. Uh, I took a little class because my husband's been like he. I used to. My degree is actually like uh, concentration in directing theater, and I haven't directed theater since I left school because I just haven't. Um, and uh, I missed having that and my husband was like why are you not just like making films because okay. we can just make them on our phones and I said yeah I don't know I don't know why I'm not, I don't know I understand that and so I took a class at an improv school that said make your movie now and it literally just gave you the tools to just make your first shitty film um just do it just and do it. it gave it was really really um a nice setting because we were all on the same level uh, yeah, maybe I was the one in class that like had connections to like Rooster Teeth people, but like I was truly like on the same level as yeah. everybody else in that class. Um, and there was a guy in the class who I'm really, really good friends with now, but he was a huge RT fan. Oh, so I, and he was like, when I, like, when I walked in, I was like, oh, hey, what's going on, Sam? And That's he's nice. like, yeah, I know, I know who you are. And I was like, oh, do we know people like the same friends? And he's okay. like, no, that's not it. <laughs> it was so it was really sweet. That's We're really, really close good. now. Um, See, I have uh, the girl I was talking about earlier who screamed me at my very first con. Yeah, yeah, she, we're friends now. Yeah, like that's been happening. Yeah, we're friends now. She's and an actor. I mean, she's been in some Rooster Teeth properties. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you, um, 
it was good to learn from a very, very basic level that like, I can do this. And um, you know what, if I watched it now, I'd probably like, obviously hate certain things, but you know what, I kind of dug it. I dug my first ever film I made. I would edit it, I would change the coloring, I'd change a bunch of other stuff, but I learned a lot from it. And I actually learned that like, oh, I could totally do this. Like I'm, I'm if I really set my mind to it, I could make it again. And so um, I just made two more after that and they got a little bit better. Um, so that the I think most for recent that, one you can watch online. You can watch online. Yeah, go to Vimeo.com and type in Wolves Inside. I feel like that's the only way I can tell you to go and watch it. Um, Wolves Inside, female western, written, directed, written. and starring this amazing woman. And I was 18 weeks pregnant, so just have that in the back of your brain. Um, but like, I think that that right there taught me that like I was so nervous about people's opinions yeah. about what I was gonna like, what it was gonna be. I was like, oh my! I was a nervous wreck in front of this tiny ass theater of like 20 people watching a <laughs> short film, and I like my husband like felt my back and I was like a stone. And then when it was done, I finally relaxed. And we heard laughs and like people clap. One woman went woo and like in the middle of it, and I was like, oh my god, she's my best friend. And um. But it, uh, was it me? No. You were in here. I know. I I wish it was you. Know, but like, it was some random ass woman. And like, it was the best thing ever. And, um, I walked away from that and I was like, why was I so nervous about people's opinions though? Like, cause I had mine and I was just going to stick to them no matter what. Yeah. Um, well, but it, it's so human nature, though. We yeah. cannot help Thank it. I, I hate that. I mean, too. even someone like me who, like, does not care what other people think. I mean, I, care what still, people, I still, still totally there. care what people yeah, think. You just do. But, like, you just do. But it's amazing how, like, that, that class and that making that film and, like, putting my opinion out there, how empowering that was for me as yeah. an artist. And so just do it, man. Just do it. And I don't care how horrible it is. And you no. know what? It might be really good. Cool.